okay, that doesn't sound human. Oh my God. But I've known men who've gone through special ops training specifically to be SEALs. And that's kind of how they are. Well, their bodies are in peak, peak physical condition. Their metabolism is on another level. So I think that's what really adds to that. Their they body just go pro- hard 100% of the time, whether it's during the training or it's partying. It's like they just give 100% and go hard as hell no matter what they're doing. Oh, my God. I know what you're talking about. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> In some ways, BJ and Erica were alike. I mean, they both were serious, focused, and competitive. Erica had always held herself to a high standard. Perhaps this was to seek approval from her parents. Her father was a serious man who believed in hard work, determination, and wanted his daughter to succeed. He had been a big proponent in Erica's basketball playing. Well, yeah, I mean, he's he's given his child a comfortable life, and obviously he's driven. I mean, well, I don't know where his money comes from or what he does. I believe but... he owned a construction business. Okay, so he's he's worked hard. He's, you know, got all this, you know comfortable life together and then you have your children live it but a lot of times i don't think people realize that there is so much pressure on these kids that live in these types of with the you know the ceo father or the big business dad or the mom who's very successful they expect their children to be very successful as well no matter what they do the bar is set high parents demand success yeah they want perfection i mean it can be a lot of pressure. Well, you can see depression and suicide and things of that nature in uh, families like this. And I think it's hard sometimes for, you know, the kid from the trailer park to be like, what the hell? What, what was so hard about that? But, yeah, just always being expected to try hard as you can and be exceptional at everything you do. That's a lot of pressure on a young person. And knowing that her father is putting forth a huge chunk of money. Well, yeah. For coaching, training, basketball camps driving her to games, events. He probably has $100,000 in all that extra stuff by the time she gets, you know, to the collegiate level. So realizing that, like, you're an investment as well. Yeah, basically. That needs to pay off. I mean, that is a lot of pressure. Erica's mother was a trophy wife of sorts. She was beautiful. And a lot of people noted that instead of spending her days shopping and kind of living this life of leisure, she wanted to work with her husband. She was by his side, working along with him, you know, the whole time. Oh, so she's driven as well, and uh, a nuts and bolts type of woman. She's not just redoing the house, you know, 20 times and hanging out drinking wine with her socialite friends. Failure was not in Erica's future. And like I mentioned before, BJ was also no-nonsense. He was serious, hyper-focused young man. He lived and breathed military life. Well, they sound like a couple that would, you know, find each other and, you know, get together. Initially, BJ kind of blew Erica off. He was not interested in a relationship. But when the pair met up a few months later, the relationship took a different turn. Immediately, the pair fell into a, you know, boyfriend-girlfriend type of situation. Wow. I hope that uh, the listeners don't hear this horrible storm outside. (laughs) (laughs) Erica quickly became obsessed with BJ. She just couldn't think of anything else. And I think that's not so uncommon when you're young and you get your first serious boyfriend, girlfriend. You just think they hung the moon. Well, yeah, and um, these are rather intense people. You know, they, they, they lean into everything they do. They try their hardest. So I don't think it's a surprise that she'd be really, really in love. And he's good looking, he's athletic, she's impressed, he's a Navy SEAL. Yeah. I mean, what woman wouldn't be? They impress me. Impressed, right? (laughs) (laughs) So she was just all about BJ. Within two weeks of dating, the pair was already discussing marriage. Though I got the feeling in my research, it was likely Erica who was pushing this idea. Well, and it sounds like she was kind of pushing from the beginning you know he wasn't all that into her friends thought the two were odd together it didn't seem like a couple that made sense but they got along with one another the heart wants what the heart wants right exactly 
Now, most everyone who knew Erica Grace and her family would expect a lavish wedding. Well, yeah. These were the kind of people that, you know, they didn't do anything small. Yeah, they spend drop $30,000 on a freaking wedding. Are you kidding me? Instead, Erica and BJ eloped to Las Vegas. Oh, so they're doing their own thing. She didn't tell anyone for several months, including her parents. Well, I'd say it's going to be a pretty big deal because, you know, they, they expect to do things a certain way, make a big show of it, and introduce their daughter and her new man to the world, if you will. I think that in itself is interesting. Why you would run away to get married and then keep it quiet. Well, it, Was it for fear that her parents wouldn't accept the relationship? Was it the thrill of having the secret I th- maybe it's all Just that for stuff. for the two of them. But there's definitely something to that, to choose elopement. Now, that they have, you know, the parents haven't already, you know, a lot of times that happens after the parents uh, on either side say, we don't like that person, we don't think they're right for you, maybe you should look, you know, look at someone else. And then finally the people are just like, you know, sneak off together, do their own thing, and then they come back and they're like, well, shit, you're already married, we got to make this work. But, yeah, I think there's definitely something tied up because the family's definitely had a means to do a big wedding and all that. And I'm sure she expected, uh, knew her parents expected certain things, you know, for it to go certain ways. So maybe it's a control thing and she's just doing her own thing. Well, I think it's also going to show a lot of impulse. Right. That will be prevalent throughout the marriage. Yes. Erica transferred to Virginia Beach The Navy sent BJ to Alaska for some cold weather training. With his military enlistment, the pair is rarely together. When they are finally able to be together, the relationship is not what it seemed. The honeymoon was over, as they say. I mean, we all know marriage is a different ballgame. Well, it is. You can love and date someone, but when you move in together, when you're living together full-time, and when you make that commitment of marriage... That's a big deal. You see sides of people you never expected. And like, I didn't know they farted every single day. <laughs> oh, my God, they're gassy. Oh, I didn't tell you about my gas issues Thanks, while we were Dylan. dating. <laughs> That's not me. Erica joined him in Alaska, though she was not supposed to go up there, and he ended up getting into trouble. The Navy actually sent Erica and BJ back to Virginia. Now, so, again, they're doing their own thing. They don't care what anybody else, what they're supposed to do. They don't care about the rules or what's expected of them. And BJ was not sure who he'd married. The confident rich girl who planned on going to law school was anxious, controlling, and had severe obsessive compulsive disorder. So, yeah, he's the focus of her entire world, it sounds like. The other things are kind of going by the wayside, her you know, her father education, you know, family, he's all, she's got like tunnel vision on him. Codependency. And that's not good. Erica also had an addiction to Xanax and Valium. Well, that's not good either. And BJ, the sexy military man, seemed to focus less and less on his career. Oh, so... His chain of command started to notice significant changes in his behavior His personality, his commitment, his marriage to Erica seemed to be derailing his career. Well, that's not good. He started getting into trouble, mostly for being AWOL, which is absent without leave. I thought it was away without leave. Uh, Absent. Absent? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I believe you. You was in the military. His leadership would say he seemed to reject authority altogether. Yeah, this... There's a pattern here. I mean, they keep doing it. They have certain kind of personalities. And I think it's that age old thing with a couple. If they were separate still and didn't have this strong relationship between the two of them, they'd still probably be excelling in all the things they were doing before. And from what I can understand, it seemed like most of his AWOL, his absences were due to Erica not wanting him to leave her. Yeah, but I mean... So he'd miss duty, he would miss training. He wouldn't be back on time. Yeah, he, you know, he'd get leave and come home and be late returning. And it all just seemed to be tied up in his relationship with Erica and her obsession. 
Yeah, it sounds sounds very intense. Eventually, he is given a dishonorable discharge, and I couldn't find a whole lot of information about what exactly led to that, but I'm going to assume it was just uh, an accumulation of, you know, the the different occurrences. Some of all parts, and maybe in the very end, something even more significant happened. They're like, look, you know, obviously this is not for you. But that's crazy because all that intense training, bud school, all that stuff. How, can you imagine how many hours he put into this? And then to get a dishonorable discharge at the end of it. I think that would leave a mark on a person. The Cyphers fell into a relationship of codependency at some point after BJ was discharged from the military. They take two months and travel to South America where they bum around, but primarily stock up on drugs. They literally smuggled suitcases full of Xanax and Valium back into the States at the end of 2000. Damn, he's got like a bunch of uh, like pill trees down there in South America. What the fuck, dude? Oh, my God. By April of 2001, Eric and BJ had moved near her parents in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Erica's father bankrolled a business, Memory Lane, which was a scrapbooking store in the local mall. Oh, that's very 90s. Is this 90s? Yeah, and apparently Erica was really into scrapbooking. A lot of people were back then. But she wasn't very good at it. Oh, okay. Her scrapbooks kind of suck. <laughs> really? Yeah. So she, well, I mean, she's trying. You know, she's got daddy's money behind it. Memory lane. Fucking I like that. Scrapbooking. A fucking scrapbook store, guys. Okay. That was a very early 90s thing right there. I had a friend who owned a scrapbook store for a period. Did, I, does anybody still have these scrapbooks? I mean, and someone may be listening right now that's into scrapbooking and it's probably creative and cool and it's it's just not for me. It's not for me either. No, I'd be lucky to have a picture album. Erica couldn't bear to be without BJ for more than a few minutes at a time and there was no way she was going to allow him to work just any job for eight hours a day. So her idea was that owning a business, the couple could be together. Oh, yeah. Yay. Now we're together at work, too. That always works out. BJ would later claim that Erica would have panic attacks when he left her, and though he wanted a job outside of their relationship, he just felt like he couldn't. Yeah, and she's eating Valiums and Xanax left and right. Oh, my God. BJ had no money, so Mr. Grace, Erica's dad, was paying for the business and likely paying for their living arrangements and vehicles as well. So he's kind of trapped in a way as far as getting more he can't get more distance he doesn't have his own thing in any form or fashion that's not a good position to be in but you allow yourself to end up there well and it makes me wonder a man like bj who has been so fiercely independent and masculine in the military yeah um you know probably in charge suddenly being you know i guess financially dependent on another man, yeah, maybe his father-in-law. Maybe I mean, I wonder it. if that kind of bothered him, messed with his ego a little bit, or if he was just like, hey, cool, I don't have to do anything, and I'm living a fancy lifestyle. Well, it can go either way, but that's one of those things that over time could wear on a person. Or if, when they argue, she's like, my daddy this, or my dad said this, we should do this. It depends on how, and I would think that, it's a natural reaction if you're bankrolling anything to be like wanting to control and manipulate it because or throw it up. So, yeah, that's that's the kind of thing that could wear on someone over time, I'm sure. Not only did Erica expect her husband to stay home with her 24-7, but she insisted on living a certain lifestyle. Those who knew Erica described her as someone who wanted what other people couldn't have. Okay. She was obsessed with diamonds. Oh, I thought she was wanting mummies. Expensive jewelry, coach bags. And I want to laugh at this Hooters merchandise. Is that a thing? Is there people to collect Hooters merchandise? Meet Erica. <laughs> That's the, interesting. The tiny uniform tank tops that Hooters waitresses wear are not available to the public. That Hooters uniform of the tank top and those orange shorts. Okay. The terrible, shiny, dance skin tights. Yeah. Right? But Erica was obsessed with 
anything relating to Hooters. Okay. So and especially the uniforms because they were not easily bought. Basically, you got to buy.